In this video, I go over setting up a virtual machine using Vert Manager in QEMU. So to start out with, let's go ahead and launch our virtual machine manager, or Vert Manager as it's called. You'll see two here. Let's just go ahead and delete one of these Windows 10 files. And we're going to go ahead today and create a virtual machine. In the prior video, I go in the actual installation. So if you haven't already, please check that video out if you need to install Vert Manager or QEMU. So to start out, let's go ahead and hit File, New Virtual Machine. And we're going to select an ISO image today. We'll browse for it. Now you'll see storage volumes. You actually need to add your, your images directory if it's not already in here. Chances are it's not. You just hit the plus sign. You name it M IMG or whatever you want to do. And then you just basically browse to that directory. And I've already done this, so it's already actually in here under images where you'll see it all. So we'll pick our ISO out. I'm going to use 1809. Now, if you remember in a prior video in GNOME boxes, this actually failed, and I believe it will fail on this one too, but let's go ahead and try to do this. So we're going to go ahead and hit forward. All this looks pretty good. 40 gigs, and win 10, and finish. So with this, I'm going to drag this over here. You have a couple more options in the GNOME boxes. If you go up to view, you can do full screen. I like to hit resize to VM. This kind of makes it exactly the size that it needs to be to see what's going on in the background. Um, some other things here is the detail. So let's say you wanted to change settings in this VM. Now in GNOME boxes, it was kind of all hidden from you, or at least there wasn't that many options under the config menu. You get a little bit more here by hitting the light bulb. And as you notice, the console actually went away and now you can actually change quite a bit of stuff here. So Vert Manager is very good for actually configuring a lot of these things. Let's see what happened. Okay, so this was 1809. It gave us the blue screen of death saying threads. One thing about Vert Manager that's ultra powerful is you can actually go in and change a lot of the virtualization settings, pretty much any virtualization setting. So to solve this problem, I've actually researched this ahead of time, and I know that it's a CPU issue. It's incompatible with this model CPU. So I'm basically picking an older older model to, to get around this problem for the time being so I can get 1809 installed. So it'll say, okay. And if you change memory or disk size or any of these things, you have to shut down your virtual machine, obviously, before it'll take effect. So we'll do a force off and start again. This right here turns it down. Think of it as a light switch on and off. You click that and it tries to basically send a uh, power off. Now it's still saying no bootable device. So let's go in here and look at our boot options. Ah, trying to boot to the disk before the CD-ROM. That's going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and turn the machine off again. Force off back here, apply the changes and start the machine. All right, so it's back and going again. So I kind of went over that a little fast, but um, and why this loads windows in the background, I'm going to go ahead and flip back to the details screen. Um, broad overview, this is where you name it. Performance just gives you some metrics. CPU, you can actually change the allocation up and down easily here and also change the CPU configuration. Now, this can actually be taken one step forward and there's a, a config file where you can set certain kernel commands if you get want to get real technical. Um, but for today's video, uh, just know that you have a little bit more config options in Vert Manager. Uh, memory allocation, change that, self-explanatory. You just saw me change the boot menu or boot priority. Um, Disks, you can actually change and map disks in after we install our guest tools on here, which we're going to go over. Um, CD-ROM drive and here. So a lot of guides out there, you'll notice when it says Vert Manager and QEMU, 
they have you do bridge networking. Now, a lot of times this isn't necessary. Um, however, in sometimes when you're you're emulating like a certain Linux box, it may be necessary. And uh, I highly recommend just kind of everyone's a little different. So I don't want to get into bridge networking today. I may make a completely separate networking video because it's just such an in-depth topic that needs to be covered. And then all the rest of the stuff I, I don't really mess with. I always leave it on Spice for the display and pretty much everything else here, I leave default. So you'll see that it actually worked. We'll go ahead and hit next, install, and go ahead and install Windows 10 on this. And this is actually Windows 10 1809, which we couldn't do in the past one, so. All right, I'm gonna speed all this up, so uh, go ahead and choose all the options and do the full install here, and I will see you on the desktop here in a couple seconds. Okay, now that we have our desktop, let's go ahead and open up our horrible web browser that is now getting turned to Chromium, apparently. Microsoft Edge. Goodbye, you dying creature. But we're going to have to use it for just a few moments and download something called Spice Guest Tools. So we're going to go download Spice Guest Tools. From here, what we're doing is downloading specific tools to make this VM run faster and also uh, be able to connect to our shared or local drives on the Linux uh, system. So let's go ahead and download the actual tools. If you go right here, this is the executable file we can actually run. And we're gonna need the web dev daemon as well. So let's go ahead and wait for this to pop up. Click yes and, and install this. Okay, with that installed, let's go ahead and grab our daemon right here. And we're gonna just save target as. And this is what we want, Spice Web Dev X, X6 64 latest. This is a 64-bit uh, computer I'm on, which pretty much everyone out there, if you're if you don't know if you're 32-bit or 64, unless you're on a 10 plus old computer, chances are it's going to be 64. So we'll go ahead and save this and run it as well. Close all the tabs and click our little shield and install this. It goes really quick. So you only see a couple seconds of that. And from here, our system's pretty much configured. Although there's one more thing before we reboot that I wanna do. If you notice during the install, it kept popping up this. Let's go ahead and disable our CD-ROM drive so it's not trying to boot back into our install media. So with that, we'll go yes, apply, okay, and restart all right we're back and one last thing i always do once i finish installing the vm i get the guest tools on there everything's there just go into here pull up your device manager and let's just double check to make sure there's no missing devices in here so if you're seeing a missing device, you need to hunt that down. But after doing the Spice Guest Tools, I highly recommend that. Um, so we're, we're good on this computer. It's seeing everything here. It's seeing our processors. The processors here, I'm using that Cordu 2 and uh, but it's, it's reading just fine for the most part. I need to do some probably more tweaks to make this run a little bit faster, but for today's video, this will get you up and running in Windows 10. And from here, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is get our Linux home directory or downloads directory onto this machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, to finish out the web dev here, we need to add a device to our virtual machine. Now, this isn't as pleasant as it was in GNOME boxes. 
normally in GNOME box, as I said, hey, you should always be using web dev because it's just a lot easier than doing a Samba share. In Vert Manager, this is a bit different where I almost recommend the Samba share more than web dev just because I'm not a particular fan of this process. But to do it, we need to add a new channel for web dev. So we hit add hardware, channel, we select web dev right here, finish. It'll say yes, hey, it won't add it until we shut down our guest. So we'll come here, hit the light switch. This will shut down our virtual machine. From here, we can check our thing. Boom, it added it. So let's go ahead, hit play to start our virtual machine. We have our new web dev channel. And once this starts, it's not going to work in the user session or vert manager directly. So you could VNC into this a lot of different ways, but uh, the only way I know to do it is to use what's called vert viewer. To do this, we actually need to exit out of here. And we can go ahead and leave this up and going. You see the virtual machine still running. You have to open up terminal and connect through it through vert viewer. Now the command connect command is a little bit complex here, but I want to walk through the logic of it. Vert dash viewer and then dash dash connect equals. And if you go into right here, this top selection to hit details, it's always going to be this libvert URI. So it's going to be this right here will always go into it. Yours may look different since I run multiple uh, virtual machine hosts and, and other things on this system. Uh, mine's a bit, bit different from the usual, but copy this right into here. So it'll be connect equals QEMU. And then for the dash dash domain name, it's just this name right here, win10. And you can easily you know, find that on pretty much anywhere as far as the details go, um, or set that to something uh, a little bit easier, but it's always gonna use this name. You can also use UUID if that's your thing, but for me, I just do a basic name and always use domain name when doing vert viewer. So with that explained, let's go ahead and launch this. You'll see it looks a little bit different than the other one. Um, that's just, that is completely normal. So I'm going to zoom out a little just so we get a full screen. And that was back when I was using a Microsoft account. My daughter's now seven years old. So, uh, it's a, she's so cute, but, um, all right. So from here, we need to map our shared folder. And if we go file preferences, you'll see we now have this capability. Why they hide it in Vert Viewer or make it hard to get to is beyond me, but we'll just go ahead and share our downloads folder. Click X to this, and if we pop this up and go to this PC, it should pop in here. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit for this to actually recognize, um, so I might give it just a second. And as always, check your services manager if it doesn't. Now you see it just popped in there. It was about 30 seconds. So this machine, um, not running tip top shape, not at least in my eyes. I don't really like the performance here, but we'll open it up. We should see some kernel packages and things that are on my local machine here. So this is web dev using vert manager, not my you know, hey, it was a great solution for GNOME boxes, but after using it in Vert Manager, I almost don't like it just because of this. Now, you could easily set an alias and other things to make this pop up a lot faster if you're constantly in and out of here. So those are my opinions over WebDAV using Vert Manager. I highly recommend using a Samba share instead of WebDAV if you're going to stick with Vert Manager and constantly do that. If you do like this solution, 
just make an alias so you don't have to type all that in every day and you can just type win 10 in your terminal and it would pop up in using vert viewer instead of the vert manager style so um, with that said i will be releasing a video over samba shares coming up uh, be on the lookout for that that way you can easily set that up yourself and access any of your files from your local machine through a Windows 10 instance or any other instance on your local network. But that's it for today, guys.